It is 21 to 4. I said on the program last week that it was a near certainty that Bill Shorten will be the next Prime Minister of Australia. And uh, Mr Shorten has said if he is elected to that esteemed office, uh, one of the first things he will do is have a plebiscite on a republic followed by a referendum. And uh, we learned today that the Australian Republican movement since the dual citizenship scandal in Gulf Canberra has had an upsurge in uh, applications for membership. So joining us in the studio right now is the head of the Australian Republican movement, Peter Fitzsimons. Peter, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tom. We have had an upsurge in membership, but we've still got space for you. I've said <laughs> leave a spot at the table for Tom Elliott. You can sit at the top of the table. We want you there. i tell you what I would like to do down the track is when people have decided democratically that they yep. want a republic is talk about what type of republic it will mm. be. Because this is what I studied at university in comparative government. And when people say a republic, they think it's one thing. It's any one of about 200 different things. There are b- very, very broadly three basic models, mm. like the, the, the Australian Republic movement. Well, it'll be for Australian democracy to, to decide. I personally am for the minimalist model, mm. which is we change just about nothing bar one thing. As you know, the current system is the Prime Minister chooses the Governor-General, yes. and then he asks an unelected lady in England what she thinks about it. I would choose to call ourselves the Commonwealth of Australia, to remain the Commonwealth of Australia, to call the Governor-General the Governor-General. Prime Minister chooses the Governor-General and then asks the Parliament of the People for a two-thirds majority. If there was any blockage, any problem, the position would devolve mm. to the Chief Justice of the High Court. Let me hear you say, hey. So we just... We, OK, so <laughs> we, we, we omit the, the, the phone call to Her Majesty the Queen. But yes. The, the problem is it's not what the Australian people want. I mean, it, it was pretty clear in 1999 that the that minimalist model was rejected because people say, no, if we're going to have a, a people's president, then the people want to select the president. And the answer to that is the problem in 99, you say 99, we much prefer to say last century because it Mm. sounds much longer ago, (laughs) last millennium My daughter refers to it as the black and white era. (laughs) Look, the the answer to that is the problem in 99 was that the Republic movement divided up and saying, basically, if you don't do my system, I'm going to take my bat and ball and go home. And this Mm. time, what we're saying, I say as chair, we want everybody under our umbrella that's passionate for a public movement, but everyone must agree, if your position is my way or the highway, you can be under your own umbrella, but if direct election, if Australian, if the Australian democracy decides that they want direct election, that's fine. I join them. We, I, I, I chatted the other day to the Irish president, Professor Michael Higgins, and it was a real epiphany for me. He addressed a lunch in Sydney and he was standing there and he's a very fine man, as is our Governor-General, Sir Peter Cosgrove. Mm-hmm. The difference is this. When Sir Peter Cosgrove stands in front of him, and I met with him on Sunday with a, a garden party thing for a charity. There he is. He's a fantastic man, but he stands there before us as a representative of the Queen of England. When my, Professor Mike, President Professor Michael Higgins of Ireland stands there, he's a, he represents the people of Ireland. And our basic position is that in the 21st century, it is ludicrous to maintain that as a people, we can do no better than to find our head of state from a family of English aristocrats Mm. living in a palace in London. Tom, isn't that obvious to you? Well, it's interesting, though, because uh, at least a couple of other countries, which are pretty good places to live, uh, New Zealand, Canada, for Mm. example, have chosen the same system and and kept it. And New Zealand has just chosen a Republican Prime Minister and she's going great guns. Well, just on that, uh, last month I spoke to uh, Matt Thistlethwaite and uh, he's (laughs) the Shadow Assistant Minister for an Australian Head of State. And it's pretty clear that... Bill Shorten is serious about this. Now, I think it's it's odds on Bill Shorten is going to be the next Prime Minister. I don't think Malcolm Turnbull can, you know, turn around the opinion polls or, or the one that matters, the next election. Have you spoken with Bill Shorten in recent times about how to get the process moving, you know, soon after he becomes PM? It, look, it is, we are ruthlessly bipartisan, okay? Right. So we call, I wrote to the Prime Minister well, today. Well, Malcolm Turnbull's a Republican. I mean, have you spoken to he him is, about it? I wrote to him today on a particular matter. And he, he is the most passionate Republican in the land and the most eloquent Republican in the land is Christopher Pine. You hear, he, yes. you hear him speak on the Republic, it'll bring a tear to the glass. It. It's fantastic. But yes, I do speak to Mr. Shorten. And I, I must say, you would watch Q&A. A Sometimes. Few, okay, well, when Bill Shorten was on Q&A a month or two ago, I actually thought his approach was 
very interesting because he was saying, yes, we're going to do the Republic. Yes, it's all going to happen. But it's not as important as the economy. It's not as important as the environment. It's not, it, basically, he was saying it's something out to the side. We're going to get that done. People like me, I can tend to be, this will surprise you, be a little over route <laughs> about it because I do feel it very passionately. But I think the correct political approach is to say this is one of the things we are going to get done. All right. Well, I, I think Bill Shorten is committed to doing it within 100 days, that is, to having a plebiscite. We'll, we'll oh, say. No, 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 no. To be fair, to be fair, he has said on the 29th of July at your extraordinary Royal Exhibition Building, we had mm. 900 people, what he committed to, he said that in his first electoral, if, he, if elected, in his first election cycle, that we will have a referendum. And what he said in his speech was, the question will be put, and I'll be fascinated, the question that it will put will be, do you think Australia should have an Australian as our head of state. And I ask you, as a conservative commentator, could you, in the privacy of that booth, if you don't mind sharing, could you actually, on that question, Tom, do you think Australia should have an Australian as a head of state, as the father of a fine daughter, could you actually tick no, I don't think Australia should have an Australian as our head of state? I have an answer to this. I'll share it with you in a moment. Now, Peter, you asked me just minutes ago, mm. um, you know, how if if a republic vote is put to us, yes, and I would like my daughter to one day be the uh, mm. president or whatever of Australia, how can I vote anything other than yes? Yes, and, and all I say to you is, of course, the the Queen, when in Australia, is technically an Australian oh, citizen. Come on, so you're, you're better than that. The sophistry. <laughs> I mean, you're you're a man. I, I'm looking at your control room, and you've mm. got five smart young people well, in there, and I'm asking them. I'm young, looking to them. Young. Can I say you four, you four, and you on my right, the five of you? Mm. If you were presented an envelope and you opened it up and it said, do you think Australia should have an Australian as our head of state? Is there one of you, be honest, we don't know who you are, one of you who could actually tick, no, I don't think Australia should have an Australian as our head and, of and state. And I suppose I would say... Look at them, not one of them, not one of them. Uh, Peter, can I tell you that? I, I'm not a fan of the royals per se. Mm. What I'm a fan is of political systems that work. Mm. And I've seen plenty of republics that stuff it up. I mean, the French manage to do it every 50 or 60 years. They invent a new sort of republic and they always get it wrong. Um, if someone could present to me a system that, A, will be wanted by the Australian people, mm. and B, that will work and overcome some of the shortcomings that the existing existing system has beyond the, the symbolism sure. like, you know, the Queen's a foreigner and we want an Australian... I will support it. That's right? fantastic. And, and that's, but that's, that's what I'm not hearing. It's all about, don't you want an Australian okay. to be in charge of us? And the answer is, as a nation, as a mature people, we are going to have mm. a mature conversation. We're going to engage in a robust debate. Mm. We will engage. And the answer, Tom, is please trust Australian democracy yeah. to come up with a system. And look to your daughter, quite seriously. Mm. Your daughter right now, I'm told she's a very fine young woman, she can aspire to be anything she wants. She can be an astronaut. She can try mm. and cure cancer. She can win the Oscars. She can be a carpenter, a doctor, a lawyer, a grazier, anything she wants. Bar one thing, your daughter cannot aspire to be the Australian head of state. Why? Because she's an Australian. Well, she and did, under our did. constitution, yeah. under our constitution, need not apply. That position is reserved she for did, an English family. She did family. tell me recently that she uh, thought she might marry Prince George. And Good if she did that, her. she could end up Queen of Australia. 